so thank you for having me today. I wanted to give you a little bit of background um, about myself that will give you a little bit of a clue into why my business exists in the first place. Um, I come from a family of helpers and I've been always taught that when you see a problem you should try and help fix it. And I've noticed a problem in the disabilities community of struggling families, struggling educators, and really unhappy children. Now I've been blessed to be a part of this community my whole life. I had a brother with lots of challenges. We've had family friends with lots of disabilities. And then I'm also a parent of a daughter with multiple medical and neurological disabilities, including autism. So my path as a parent and an educator and a friend has allowed me to gather just an enormous amount of information and get a lot of behavior certifications that then I've been able to put into practice and see just outstanding results. Most families though don't have that same kind of opportunity and are left really desperate to try and figure out how to help their child. And that became really evident to me when I worked for the Autism Society of Indiana. I would take family calls and you know people would call looking for resources for their children either for you know, a medical service or behavior service or any, any number of different things. And more often than not, I would have to say, I'm sorry, that whatever they were looking for doesn't exist in our community. And then one day, while I was taking these calls, my little light bulb went off and I went, hey, I have those skills to meet their needs. I can do this. And so that's how Sunshine Behavior Services got started. I actually don't know how this works. Okay, <laughs> technology is so hard. Um, some of the services that I offer include workshops and training. I do consultations and coaching, and it's usually specifically related to the behaviors that are commonly associated with disabilities and trying to improve, um, improve those behaviors and, and improve and implement and, and try and encourage positive behaviors. So that can look like, um, you know, it might be me working with a child, teaching them a new skill and trying to, to eliminate a disruptive behavior. It could be working with parents. Uh, sorry, I talk with my hands too much. I feel like I'm going to throw that through the window. Um, it could be working with parents and helping them understand the purpose of a behavior and maybe then uh, figuring out how to teach their child to meet their needs and, and and teach them a more appropriate behavior. And it, it also could be, I've done a lot of workshops for the service industry. So that might look like, um, like I've done, I've done trainings for you know, the Department of Corrections, the juvenile justice system, librarians. Next week I'm doing it for the library security staff. So that when somebody with a disability comes into your facility, you can be more aware and kind of recognize this behavior is probably because of this disability or this um, challenge and it'll help you have a better interaction with these people and you know just create a more uh, understanding and compassionate workplace. So while I was working on <clears throat> the business plan for Sunshine Behavior Services I went through the SPARK program at St. Mary's and two of the girls that were in my class um, were there to try and write a business plan to open a hair salon. And so then had another light bulb go off because when I was a million years ago, fresh out of high school, I got my cosmetology degree. And um, so I, I kind of thought, you know what? I really like working with children. And I'm sure you guys have all seen on Facebook or on the internet somewhere of like kids with autism and oh, look at this great barber and this great hairstylist who you know, took their time to really help my child with autism because haircuts are really scary. They're, <clears throat> excuse me, they're everything that we tell our child not to do. Don't talk to strangers. Don't let strangers touch you. Don't let strangers come at you with sharp objects. And then, so that on top of um, all the, the sights and the sounds and the smells really makes a perfect storm of, of meltdowns. And so what I do is take that hair salon piece out of the equation and I have um, what's called Sheer Sunshine, and it's a mobile hair salon. It's a licensed mobile hair salon, and I go to children's homes so that they're on their turf, they're more comfortable, 
and we can get them sort of used to getting a haircut, having a stranger touching them, coming at them with sharp objects, and, um, and then eventually transition into a regular salon someday. That's the idea. At the beginning of any of my consultations, and especially the beginning of the haircuts, I always include some kind of calming exercise. You know, we'll do some deep breathing, or we'll maybe play for a little bit. And so it was only natural that in the middle of trying to run two businesses, I went ahead and got my children an adult yoga certification. Um, I, I've taken that piece of, of uh, the calming effect of yoga and combine it with all my behavior certifications and my education background so that when I meet with families or children, I can really uh, individualize a plan that best meets their needs. A lot of kids in the disability community don't just have one diagnosis. In fact, most of them will have maybe autism or some kind of chronic medical condition that spurs an anxiety disorder. And so uh, what I do then is have, I have a lot of private clients that I go and meet and do private yoga sessions, help them recognize what it feels like when they're starting to get anxious, how to regulate their bodies and their emotions, and then how to prepare better for any procedures that they might need. So, you know, for example, one little boy had a chronic um, medical intestinal issue so that ever since birth, everything he ate, he would just throw back up. So then he got afraid to eat. That makes sense, right? And so we, w I, we created a, a, a yoga routine and a breathing session to do before meals so that he could go in as calm as possible and try, and, um, you know, try new foods and have it be more successful for him. So oh, let me make sure that I'm on track here. All right. So I'm, I'm going to go back to this. So it might sound like I've got my too many irons in the fire, right? Um, but if you break it all down, all of the things that I'm doing are behavior-based. They, they do come from the same pool of information and the pool of knowledge that I have. Um, you know, the, the haircutting thing is a big need, but I'm still only doing maybe five haircuts a month. That's obviously not sustainable, you know, financially for me. Um, so and the, the yoga doing maybe seven classes a week. Also, that's only seven hours, so that's not a lot of work, right? And then with the, with the workshops, I'm doing maybe two to four workshops a week or, or, or a month. And so I am not working a 40-hour week even though I'm running three businesses. So don't think I'm as scattered as I may seem. Um, so here's what I need from the community. Uh, I just recently got certified as a Medicaid healthcare provider, and for the the, uh, the clientele that I'm going to be serving, I have to work. I have to serve them in a non-clinical setting. So a location for my of my own that I could bring them to, and do the yoga, or do workshops, or do you know a support group, and just have a multi-purpose space that I could do all of my services in. And even like ideally in my mind, I would like to have the, the mobile hair salon, you know, some of the kids, I go to their home and then they trans, they, they, they work their way into coming to my space to get their haircuts and then work their way into a typical salon. So it'd be just another little stepping stone for them. Um, in my mind, it would be, you know, maybe an old dance studio. So just one big box of a room that I could use for lots of different purposes. So if you guys hear of or know anything about that kind of real estate, it's not my gift, so I would appreciate an email or you know you can find me on Facebook. I do have cards over there that's got all of my information on it. The second thing, <clears throat> even though I've gone through Spark and taken a lot of workshops, bookkeeping is still just not my gift and record keeping is not my gift. And I feel like what I, the way I'm doing it now, I'm just making more work for myself. And so somebody who is gifted at bookkeeping or record keeping, I would love to sit down with you for an hour or two and you could look at what I'm doing and say, you know what, this program or that program or maybe if you just streamlined it and you'd have everything in place, I would so appreciate that. 
And then the last bit is just, you know, spread the word. If you know somebody in the disabilities community or you know somebody in even the public sector who could use a good training on, you know, Autism 101 or Disabilities 101, just to be more familiar with that clientele so that when somebody comes in, you don't think, gosh, they're acting really weird or what is that kid's problem or, you know, why are they doing X, Y, Z? I could maybe be bridge that gap or fill in, fill in those answers. So that would be super awesome. And then there's all my contact information and some of my certifications. And like I said, I also have business cards over on the table. So any questions?